Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons, a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for more than 400 days. I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today we are going to speak regarding free-to-play players tips and tricks, especially for beginners because Call of Dragons has a lot of tips which you need to do, need to know in order for you to progress throughout the game in a proper way. So you will be flexible and you will be fighting in a good way. So you will be able to have high amount of merits at the end of the day, right? So first of all, we're going to speak about faction, uh, which faction is uh, good to choose whenever you are starting the game. We have three choices so far, Spring Wardens, League of Order and Wilderburg. From here, I think League of Order is a wise choice and it should be the number one choice, uh, especially if you are a free-to-play player, simply because, uh, in my opinion, mages are the most free-to-play friendly uh, legion, uh, legion type in the game. And especially whenever you are starting the game, you need to take it into the consideration that starting heroes matter, right? It means that starting hero will be the first one whom you will be awakening. So it will be important to the starting hero to be strong so you will use the starting hero in pvp battles in farming darklings in almost every single activity right in my opinion walder is one of the best if not the best epic hero in the whole game it has the perfect uh, talent system which is magic pvp and skill and in general i think skill talent tree is the best one for mage uh, heroes simply because the main uh damage type which you are doing is skill damage type right and you're gonna upgrade your skills through the skill talent system in in order in in general like for league of order uh mages are the main legion type in the game and of course special unit which is celestial is also mages which means you will have a couple of mage legions you will be throwing your skills from the long distance and it will be like most safe choice for to play players who are just having the game to just pick league of order to have overall gathering speed 10 percent legion magic defense three percent and two uh, mage uh, units which is celestials and vestals the other choices are of course spring wardens spring wardens in my opinion is like for cavalry players and i don't think that cavalry is uh, much of a free to play friendly legion type in the game of course gwenwin is nice now, Gwenwin is useful against Behemoth battles, Gwenwin is useful against Darklings, but Gwenwin is not that good against PvP, against other players, right? That's why I think Legion March Speed and Elixir Production Speed is for late game, and when you are beginning uh, this game, you don't generally don't need this kind of faction bonuses at the start. At the late game, of course, elixir production speed is amazing uh, uh, talent for faction and march speed is also quite good uh, in terms of wilderburg well wilderburg has starting hero as a bahar which is infantry garrison skill depending on your playstyle, maybe you don't want to play as a mage and you want to play as infantry infantry is also viable for free to play players uh, you can always go for wilderburg but i think uh, number one choice should be League of Order, second choice should be Wilderburg, and Spring Wardens should be third choice because generally I think uh, cavalry uh, gameplay is not suited for free to play players. That's all regarding uh, factions and how factions are affecting the game and how you should be thinking about faction choices whenever you are starting the game. Now, in terms of uh, game gameplay, there is a couple of tips which you need to know, right? Here in Call of Dragons, we have Market. We Market has a VIP shop, VIP levels. Every single time, whenever you are logging into the game, you are getting 200 daily honor points. And whenever you're going to level up the, the membership level, you, you will get new perks and daily gifts, right? In my opinion, whenever you are starting the game, you should try your best to get at level 8, right? The second research queue is amazing. And plus, not only that, 
you will be able to choose the desired legendary hero per day which means every single day whenever you're gonna log into the game you will be able to get one token of your desired hero it will be like your maximum choice because as a free to play player you don't have many choices in general about legendary heroes because the legendary tokens are not gettable so easily in this game and that's like one of the most primary ways of getting tokens which in for the heroes which you will actually need right so level 8 is one of the most mandatory things sooner you will unlock level 8 buffs and level 8 uh, daily gifts it will be much much better it will be helpful for you you're gonna get legendary token for your desired hero you will have second research queue which will help you a lot like imagine whenever you are starting the game every single research you need to wait until you're gonna start a new one and whenever you're gonna get to level eight you will have two choices you will be able to research two skills at the same time and also regarding like a vip store every single week try your best to buy basic sp recovery potions maximum also five minute speed ups and legendary medals because legendary medals are also very very important that's the three things which i always buy every single week uh try to not forget this because like this is really really important right uh, Basic CP recovery is used for the every single action of the game, so, uh, such as like killing Darklings, uh, destroying forts, and well, 5 minute speed ups is great. And of course, legendary medals are important in order for you to um, increase the stars of the heroes, right? That's the all about VIP uh, shop, VIP store, which is quite important in my opinion. Level 8 is mandatory and after that, well, I don't generally advise to spend uh, gems uh, after level 8 on VIP store. Just try to play the game and day by day you will be increasing or months by months you will be increasing your levels and you will get to higher levels which gonna give you more perks and more daily gifts in general i think the second priority whenever you are speaking about constructions and buildings in the game of course you should always try to level up your town hall right at least on 24 level but there is couple of thresholds which is important right for example uh, at level 16 you are getting four legion q which means you will be able to use four legions at the same time well you can see on level six you will have two uh, on level 10 you will have three uh, after that at 16 you will have four and after that 21 level your town becomes metropolis and you are getting five legions at the same time which means you will simply have more legions to gather more legions to fight to kill darklings and destroying forts also you're gonna have additional legion capacity which is going to increase the number of troops which is inside your legion so town hall is one of the most priorities in this game uh, and whenever i started this game my priority was to get to level 24 and after that i stopped for a couple of months because i needed a lot of resources in order for me to upgrade to 25 and finally i managed to do that so 24 is amazing but try to get at least to 21 so you will have five legions at the same time and how you will be how you will help yourself to have uh, high levels on your buildings it's pretty easy to understand you're gonna go to the building uh like a uh, build right and you can see that here you have two two legion queues two building queues right at the start of the game you have only one building queue same as research so you will have to spend uh, a couple of thousand gems in order for you to unlock this building queue so try to do that it's really important as i same as research you will be able to build two buildings at the same time which will buy you a lot of time which will buy you a lot of opportunities because uh, whenever you are like choosing the priority which building you want to build generally it has some uh, things you need to build at first so you whenever you have two buildings at the same time you are getting to your priority sooner so another really important thing another tip which is just get two building queues so you will build your desired buildings pretty easily 
that's one of the most mandatory things which you can do in general more about buildings of course we have very very important building which is hospital Hospital is one of the most crucial things whenever you are speaking about uh, PvP in this game. Uh, we, we have four hospitals in this game. You maximum amount of hospitals you can build is four. Try to get at least to 24, all of them, right? Because every single level to every single building is giving you more uh, ways and more elixir production, more uh, elixirs in general. So whenever you will be fighting, you will have more ways for you to heal your troops or you will continue your fights and you will be more effective, right? In general, I think uh, until you're not going to understand how hospital works in this game, it will be really, really hard for you to fight because generally whenever you are fighting against tier 5 players, every single legion which is getting hit by tier 5 is getting a lot of wounded troops like at least 100k uh, just like almost minimum so try to have four hospitals on 24 level it will be really helpful don't forget about army recruitment don't forget about every single building about army recruitment because whenever you are increasing the level of your army recruitment you are getting more uh, training capacity right for example at level one you have 20 at level 200 115 you can see that every single level your training capacity is increasing and increasing and plus it after like level uh, 10 you are getting defense overall defense bonus from 0.5 percent and when you're gonna have your army building to 25 level it's getting to two percent so it's not only about training capacity it's also big buff which is defense buff uh, for all uh, for overall right for every single legion uh, type in the game and try to have all of your army um, building at the high level try your maximum i understand 25 level is really hard to get but 24 is gettable for every to play players of course it will take some time but that's another priority where you should be spending your resources now it's time for us to speak about research right because research is really really important it determines what kind of troops we are going to have how much buffs they are going to have and in general i think it's really really important in order for you to understand and how this game works you have you kind of have to know which kind of research you need to do right whenever you are starting the game of course in terms of like economy tree there is couple of mandatory things which you need to do right uh, there is couple of skills which is really important to get for example gem prospecting prospecting right allow you your legion to gather gems in the field uh, without this research skill unlocked you won't gonna be able to gather gems around the map and for free to play players especially for beginners uh, gathering gems is one of the most important ways of getting gems in general 1000 gem per week if you are playing this game occasionally or like if you are generally playing this game uh, you will have a lot of gems gathered like in six months right like you can check it in statistics how much gems you gathered in total that's really important to unlock of course stamina and breast control as uh, sp recovery speed is important and max sp is of of course important after that you have scholarship which is research speed uh, that's like one of the crucial uh, buffs which you can get in order for you to research skills uh, uh, much faster than before it's, it simply means that you're gonna uh, research skills 10 percent faster than before after um, getting five levels on scholarship one uh, we're gonna move on and uh, here we have a couple of important skills architect two, two uh, and here we should have architect one there's the building speed right same as research speed here we have building speed in this game so architect one and architect two is really important 35 percent build speed increase is quite a lot in my opinion which you should not miss so max this out as fast as possible and of course supply chains overall gathering speed 10 percent now for free to play players especially for beginners you're gonna farm a lot you're gonna gather resources a lot uh during uh, your free time so 
faster you're gonna gather your resources, more resources you are going to have in general. Here we have Stamina Tomb, same max SP, but here we have 400 and Breast Control, uh, which is SP Recovery Speed 10%. Um, and after that, I think on Scholarship 2, which is Research Speed 15%, you should stop on uh, Economy Tree until the late game, right? At this point, you have done what's really, really needed in order for you to progress through the game so scholarship 2 on a 10 level is like sticking point when you're gonna stop on economy tree until the later stage until like let's say you played at least one year of this game right next up <clears throat> is military tech which is giving us options to increase uh, tiers of our troops increases buffs defensive attacks hp so lot of important stuff here well i'm not gonna mention that you need to increase the uh, tier of your troops until like uh like every single troop should be tier four that's like mandatory right doesn't really matter if you are aim ma maining one troop type or not every single one of the troops should be tier four after that we, we need to mention some important skills which is really really important in the fighting aspect right here we have pathfinding which gonna increase our legion march speed up to 10 percent and after that we have intelligence gathering now uh, which is helping us to scout more easily because whenever you're entering to a new map you need to scout and here we have some really really important skills right first is first aid which is legion hp which i think is one of the most crucial buffs in the game hp bonus is my favorite buff which you can get assault strategies legion attack 15 percent and trust me uh, assault strategies one from level eight takes a lot of time like 55 days 85 days 100 days so it will take time that's why it's important to have two research queues and of course defense information Defense information is giving all troop types to like defensive buffs. Doesn't matter if you are a marksman, mage, infantry, cavalry, every single legion type will get this buff. Uh, Pathfinder 2, 10% legion march speed. Of course, important. Try to do that. Not gonna mention tier 4 because you have to have tier 4, right? You like every single legion should be tier 4 as fast as possible sooner you're gonna get it better it will be for you and for your alliance members after that we have a choices right here for every single legion type we have buffs arcana knowledge magic penetration is for mages sharp points and marksman protection is for archers swift strike cavalry protection is for cavalries and infantry tool and infantry protection is uh, for infantries in order for you to choose which kind of skill set and skill tree to continue and max out, we need to move to a different topic, right? The different topic, in my opinion, is really, really important. One of the most important things in the whole game. As a free-to-play player, you need to understand that it will be almost impossible for you to uh, play every single Legion type in this game try your best to choose one legion type which is mo most fun for you here we have for example marksman right marksman has high physical attack um, average defense low march speed and medium range medium range means that mar archers are not the longest range legion type in the game which means that uh, you, of course you're gonna deal damage from the far but not the farest right that's one legion type second legion type is of course mages mages has the highest range higher range than marksman the main uh, damage type is skill damage factor magic skill damage factor and of course mages has low defense and low march speed another legion type which is of course cavalry cavalry has high march speed uh cavalry has uh, medium uh, attack and low defense main damage type is physical and sometimes uh, some cavalry heroes has Understood. skill damage factor damage which means they are dealing damage through the skill uh, much more than just auto attacking normal attacks 
And the fourth uh, legion type in the whole game is of course infantry. Infantry has low march speed, but infantry has high uh, armor, which makes them tankiest legion type in the game. So you have four choices, right? You want to have high physical damage with normal attacks, uh, normal range. You want to have highest range, which means you're gonna deal damage from the forest. You want to be tanky, or you want to move around the battlefield uh, most like faster, right, than any other legion type. Here are your choices, right? For example, for me, uh, in my opinion, especially if you are a beginner, try to get mages, right? Because that's the safest choice. If you want to have fun and not, not get destroyed doing PvP, mages are safest choice because you will be able to hit your enemies forest uh, and it will be easy for you to maneuver around the battlefield and you will be able to deal damage. Especially if you choose the League of Order faction, you already have amazing mage which is Walder and you are already set up to the success uh, in the future in the Call of Dragons. If you like the gameplay of the uh, tankiness and tanking and dealing damage through counter-attack damage, what is counter-attack damage, right? Every single time, uh, if enemy is hitting your infantry, they are getting the counter-attack damage back to themselves, some percentage. That's how, in general, infantry players are dealing damage to enemies. But maybe you like to have a highest amount of physical attack, which has archers, and archers, in my opinion, are more defensive type of range legion type in this game, so maybe you prefer to throw some arrows on the enemy, then your archers are the choice, right? But another choice, so which is cavalry, moving around the battlefield, being fastest from every single legion type in the game, trying to flank, try to kill refilling legions, that's the gameplay you want to play, then cavalry is the choice for you. I generally don't advise for the player players to choose cavalry, but as I said, you need to choose the legion type, which one is most fun for you. So you have four, four choices. Think about it, try at least uh, every single one of them on PvP, on Darkling farming, or in general, play with every single Legion type in the game, and whenever you're gonna choose your desired main Legion type in the game, then you will be going to the research building and um, leveling up your main Legion type. For example, if you chose Mages, you're gonna level up Arcana Knowledge uh, and Magic Protection, and same for every single Legion type in the game. After that, like for example, we choose our main legion type in the game, and let's say we have mages, right? Uh, next step is to choose the heroes where you're gonna invest your legendary tokens and your VIP daily token um, for you in order for you to have high levels on your legendary heroes. I will say in advance, in order for every to play player to awaken legendary hero, it takes at least three to three seasons uh, by spending every single legendary token on one hero which means it is really important for you to understand where you are going right let's say you are just beginning the game uh, you chose league of order you are mage player and you have Waldo, right? I think the safest choice uh, for uh, free-to-play players during the beginning of the game should be the Welling, right? Welling is used on, on almost every single mage uh, legion hero pair. Of course, um, very, very strong hero. And I think if you're gonna invest your legendary tokens on Velin, you won't gonna be disappointed because you will be using Velin a lot, right? Like, for example, Waldir and Velin is an amazing hero pair, which I am still using. Uh, if you will just buy Lilia for $1, Lilia Velin is still one of the best hero pairs in the game. Uh, you can even run like Thea with Welling, you can even run uh, Bertrand with Welling, so Welling is still really, really useful, and especially during the beginning of the game, if you are a mage player, this is the way to go, right? So, let's say you choose infantry, for example, and you are just starting the game, right? There is a couple of choices which you can go. You can, you have Garwood, you have Nika, you have Madeline, so... In the beginning, I think Madeline should be the choice uh, from the Nika, Garwood, and uh, uh, Madeline. 
Madalinish is the strongest one, and Madalinish has the one of the best skills in the whole game, which is Legion maximum capacity. 15,000 more troops will be on your Legion if you have Madalin um, as a hero pair and hero. So, for infantry players and beginner infantry players, I think Madalinish should be the choice. But of course, if you are progressing through the game, Goresh and Skolgul is an amazing hero pair, right? So start with Madeline and you're gonna go to Goresh and Skolgul later on. That's the way to go. In terms of marksmen, for marksmen we have a couple of choices. We have Nico, we have Kinara, we have Sindrian, we have Fragar. So Zaida, yeah, of course. Uh, but for beginners, you have only two choices uh, in terms of marksmen, right? Which is Nico and Kinara. I think, and that's what I actually did, um, I spent all of my legendary tokens on Kinara, that's why she is my only awakened hero in the whole game. Other heroes which I have, there is nothing near awakening besides epic ones, right? So if you are a marksman player, you choose to play as an archer, if you're gonna invest all of your tokens on Kinara, I think you will be happy, right? Because whenever you're gonna progress throughout the game, you will try to unlock Sindrion, try to unlock Fragar, which gonna be 5 one 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 so of course, not a big deal. And slowly you're gonna build up your legions and hero pairs in the game. And of course, Zaida and Magroth is amazing, but whenever you are starting the game, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to have this hero pair. But if you do, Magroth and Zaida is the best archer hero pair in the whole game. In terms of cavalry, uh, we have one easiest choice during the beginning of the game, try to awaken Emrys. Because almost in every single cavalry hero pair, Emrys is there, and Emrys and Bakshi is also gettable from the gold keys, which will be easy for you to awaken them, simply because gold keys are gettable through rewards, some events, so it will be easier for you to have cavalry tokens in order for you to increase the levels of your hero. So we, we spoke about every single legion type, about every single heroes which you can get in the game, so try your luck, try to figure out which hero pairs will be important for you uh, and which legion type will be uh, most fun for you and try to main it and try to invest your tokens at least on one hero because if you are going to spread your legendary tokens on every single hero in this game you won't gonna have at least one good legendary hero in the game and of course most important thing first skill is always the main skill and don't unlock other skills until you won't gonna have five levels on your first skill that's like mandatory because first skill is the beauty of every single hero right that's all about heroes and the next stop is of course a uh, road to tier 5 right why it's hard for free to play players to have to get to tier 5 units simply because of the rally drum and watchtower in order for you to have a chance to unlock tier 5s you have to have watchtower 25 and you have to have rally drum which is like rally building to 25 why it is so hard right only ways for players to get treaties is to killing forts and some events right but mainly by killing forts you are getting some treaties which is like sometimes one two three which is quite random forts are this building which will need to get rallied and rally means that your alliance member should join your rally rally and everybody who is inside your rally will be able to get these rewards and the most important reward here is of course treaties never ever scrap treaties because you will need those ones because it actually needs a lot like for example in order for me to level up my rally building to 22 i need 2000 treaties right and uh, whenever you are killing forts, you sometimes, most of the time, you are getting one treaty. So it means that you need to kill 2,000 forts, which is quite a lot, right? So never scrap treaties. You need them. And of course, in terms of watchtower, we need arrows, sentinel arrows. And um, how you can get sentinel arrows, right? You can get from some events, which is a low amount and main source of... Uh, uh, getting the sentinel arrows is by killing darklings right it says five but 
Um, not every single duckling will give you these arrows, which is really, really important. And never, ever scrap sentinel arrows also, because if you want to have tier 5 units in this game, your watchtower should be 25 and your rally building should be 25. So once I made this mistake, whenever I was beginner, and I'm advising you guys to never, ever scrap treaties or sentinel arrows that's like one of the most mandatory things because whenever we will be playing this game for at least one year and you made the mistake about scrapping at least one of them you will be thinking a lot about that right uh, one of the most unique things in call of dragons is artifacts right and artifacts is important you can get artifacts through the artifact draws and uh, by playing the game by having uh, by making events and getting rewards the keys you will be able to uh, draw this um, chest or book and if you will get lucky you will get some important artifacts for your legion type whenever you are starting the game of course your main artifacts will be epic ones and um, like for example if you are archer heart preserver should be the choice from the epic ones if you are mage magic bomb should be the choice um, if you are infantry butcher's blade should be the choice and if you are cavalry uh, blade of reproach should be the choice in, in, in terms of legendary artifacts, and I will say it at once, it's not that easy to get legendary artifacts for the free-to-play players. Let's say you are mage, right? For mages, Phoenix Eye, one of the best artifacts for mages, amazing for getting merits and amazing during PvP, especially because of the bar strike. That's amazing artifact for mages. Uh, if you are playing as an archer, then Shadow Blade should be the choice. That's one of the best free-to-play friendly archer artifact. If you are playing with cavalry, you have a couple of choices. You have Kingslayer, which is the best one from here. And second tier should be Solan's Blade. And if you understand how cavalry works, then I think Storm Arrows with the Blink artifact, Blink skill, is quite interesting, right? And of course, if you don't have Phoenix Eye yet, then Tier of Arbon should be the choice, right? Uh, for the infantry, we have a couple of choices, and I will say it in advance. For infantry players, get defensive artifacts, because if you're going to attach offensive artifacts, such as Dragon Rift, for example, your infantry won't going to be tanky. Same as Spring of Silence, both of them are offensive infantry artifacts. Uh, forget about this one, go for Fang of Ashkari, which is going to give you a lot of defensive stats, which is going to make your infantry hero pair 10 times more tankier, which is the main idea about infantry. You have to be tanky. If you are squishy as an infantry player, player then it's better to rather just choose different hero pairs to fight against PvP or in general uh, to play with, right? Defensive artifacts for infantry players are important and better. Of course, we have a couple of important artifacts for utility. Uh, utility, I mean Lucius Horn. Lucius Horn will give us overall gathering speed, which is really important at the start of the game. And in general, at the every stages of the game, it will help you to gather resources much, much faster. So... If you will have Lucius Horn, you are already smiling because this is one of the best artifacts for free to play players in general, right? Of course, an Ancient Tree Roots, again, one more uh, gathering speed artifact, same as Lucius Horn, one of the best artifacts for free to play players to have more and more resources because less resources never have. Because simply, whenever you are progressing throughout the game, more and more resources are needed in, in order for you to build, in order for you to research, and in order for you to recruit army. So, Ancient Tree Roots and Lucius Horns are Horn is best utility artifact 
especially for tier especially for free to play players that's the thing about artifacts we can speak about artifacts a lot because generally we have way more artifacts in the game and not only the artifacts we spoke right there is a couple of exclusive artifacts like such as infernal flame is amazing for lilia Spring Blades is perfect for Emery Zero pairs. Uh, Gold Crest is perfect for Sidron and Fragar. Uh, Dragon Scale Armor is amazing for every single infantry. Um, for example, we're gonna continue. What else? Uh, Spirit Bone Torque is perfect for Goresh and Skogul. And yeah, like what else, right? Of course, um, one more uh, Rattle Spear is perfect for Kinara hero pairs. So we, we still have a couple of interesting artifacts in this game, such as like Dalded Crossbow, which is perfect for Magrot and Zyda hero pair. These artifacts are like kind of exclusive artifacts. You kind of have to spend some gems. And I don't advise to spend gems on artifacts during the beginning of the game. It will be much better to just just unlock second research queue, unlock second builder queue, and that's how you how you should go throughout the game. At the later stages, of course, you whenever you have a couple of legendary heroes, couple of like level eight on VIP shop, um, these two queues, then you might think about getting some artifacts, uh, which is here, which are exclusive. And of course, Visage of the Sanctus is perfect for Thea. That's enough about artifacts and one more feature uh, in this game, which is one of my favorite features, uh, is Warpets, right? Uh, in the Warpets section, we have Warpets for every single Legion type in the game, uh, which is important you to know simply because um, Warpets are not accessory. Uh, Warpets are important aspect of the game, which is giving you a lot, right? So I'm not going to go too deep about Warpets because I have done a lot of videos about them uh, i will just say more pets for every single faction uh, every single legion type and the best ones for that right for mages uh, let's start with mages sapphire Fedrake, one of the best mage um war pet in the game um like all for almost every single mage legion sapphire fedge rake will work Another mage uh, is a uh, mage warpet is Shadow Federate, especially great with Bertrand and Tohar. But of course, you can attach to almost every single mage legion this warpet. Uh, in terms of uh, cavalry, Berserker Federate is perfect and Golden Rock is perfect. For Emrys and Bakshi hero pairs, Golden Rock is much better. For Thorondil hero pairs, Berserker Federate is better. For archers, for archers we have three choice actually, uh, which is Snowpeak Rock. Snowpeak Rock is perfect for Kinara and Nico. Nico and Kinara hero pairs. Nico should be the primary. And for Syndrome and Fragar, Night Rock is the best warpet which you can attach. Right. Also, one important uh, disclaimer: Sand Lizard is amazing for archers because of the healing you are getting from the sand lizard and in general longer you're gonna stay alive with archers more damage you are going to deal in in terms of infantry we have a, like a couple of choices right like frostbear is perfect for madeline hero pairs striber is amazing for garwood Bruin Bear is amazing for Goresh and Skolgul. I hope you guys understood, right? Like Frost Bear is Madeline, Stripe Bear Garwood, Bruin Bear Goresh and Skolgul, and Venomous Lizard. You can attach Venomous Lizard to almost every single infantry hero pair, and it will work, right? Uh, that's enough about Warpets. Of course, I'm not going to speak about the skills, about how to build them, because... It will take one hour for the video to uh, speak about every single aspect about Warpets because I have done videos and guides about them. So if you guys are interested in, in, interested in regards of Warpets, check it out. You will have a lot of information there. So I think the most important things we actually covered in this video um like um, vip uh, second research queue building builder queue uh building priorities research priorities heroes legion type and of course every single time every single day you have to be recruiting your army right like 
we don't need to speak about that it's already well known it's easy to understand more army you are going to have more time you will be spending fighting because you will have more troops right um i hope i did don't forget anything uh, whenever we spoke about now free to play beginner's guide how to progress well um, in the game and if i did forget something feel free to remind me guys and as always uh type on in comment section give me your ideas uh text me on discord finally i have discord server for our channel so feel free to join and as always if you like the video press like subscribe share it always gives me more and more motivation to make more content for this amazing game i hope everybody amazing day morning and night we are going to see each other very very soon bye bye and good luck